G'day folks and welcome to Oikos. My name is Peter Hobson and I'm the Superintendent Minister of Wesley Mission Queensland. And I'm speaking to you today from the beautiful Albert Street Uniting Church here in the heart of Brisbane's CBD. This is the traditional land of the Yagara and the Turrbal peoples. And so I wanna take this time to acknowledge their custodianship. From time beyond our reckoning, they have lived in harmony with their environment and nurtured this land with a deep and abiding care. I give thanks for their stewardship and pay my respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. Acknowledging traditional custodians of the land on which you are meeting is an important part of the United Church's commitment to reconciliation. It is a sign of respect and a gesture of goodwill. It reminds us that the land on which we are meeting does not belong to us, that God's good creation does not belong to anyone, that we are called to be good stewards of God's creation, to care for the land, for the water, for the air, and that life itself is a gift from God. And so we are called to care for life, for plants, for animals, and for people. And so when we acknowledge the traditional custodians, we give thanks to God for those who have been here for tens of thousands of years, the stewards of this place who have had a deep spiritual connection with their environment, with their home. Those of us who have come to this place we call Australia in the last couple of hundred years are only very recent arrivals. And so we need to walk this land with humility and care and listen to those who have nurtured this place since time immemorial. This is how reconciliation and healing begin. This journey of reconciliation is one that the United Church takes very seriously. It is at the heart of how the church understands the good news of Jesus Christ and his message of hope and justice and peace. Hello everyone, my name is Mel Wheely and I'm the Congregational Minister of Albert Street Uniting Church. The name of this life group series is Oikos, which may not be a word that you're very familiar with and that should not be too surprising as the word comes from the ancient Greek language of the New Testament. The word oikos is best understood as meaning home. In the full sense of the word, it can refer to a house or a family or even a family's property. Sometimes ancient words find their way into modern English and this can often give us some insight into how we use words and the meaning that they have for us today. A good example of this is the word economy. This comes from another word from ancient Greece, oikonomia, which comes from oikos, meaning home, and nemen, which means management. So oikonomia, or economy, literally means the rules of the house, or rules to live by. There are several passages in the New Testament that refer to guidelines for early Christian communities that often use derivatives of the word oikonomia. Sometimes these words are translated into English with reference to the concept of stewardship. These passages give guidance to those who are called to lead and serve as members of God's special household, which will later be called the church. In 1 Peter 4 verse 10, it says, like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, Serve one another with whatever gift you have received. Titus 1 verse 7 says, For a bishop as God's steward must be blameless, must not be arrogant or quick-tempered or addicted to wine or violent or greedy for gain. A bishop must be hospitable, a lover of goodness, prudent, upright, devout, self-controlled. A bishop must have a firm grasp of the word that is trustworthy in accordance with the teaching so that they may be able to both preach with sound doctrine and to refute those who contradict it. So the word oikos and its derivative oikonomia, which later came to be associated with the word economy, was originally concerned about how we behave towards each other. It's really interesting that the word economy in our context is now almost exclusively associated with the concept of money. I wonder, is that because of the way we use money, the way we earn money and save money and spend money? Is that because it determines how we behave? Does this have something to say about what we value in our society? 
Do those with the most money get to determine the rules the rest of us live by? Do we have different rules for the rich and the poor? I wonder how God's economy differs from our economy. Do you think money matters more to God than our behaviour? Christians believe that God wants us to be generous with our money. We also believe that God wants us to be generous with our behaviour. In other words, the way we behave should always be generous towards others. And it is this generosity with our time and our resources and our service and our love that help to define us. Christians are not identified by what we believe, but rather by what we do. In Matthew chapter 7, Jesus tells his disciples that people will know his followers by their fruit. And in John chapter 13, Jesus says that people will know his disciples by our love for one another. Our behaviour matters. Throughout this Life Group series, we're going to be talking about what it means to be a part of Albert Street Uniting Church. We're going to look at the five congregational behaviours that our community have identified as intrinsic to the life of our church. These are the behaviours that we want to define us. These are the behaviours that we want to aspire towards. And they're the behaviours that describe our oikos, our home. Our five congregational behaviours are radical hospitality, passionate worship, faith-forming discipleship, and care and compassion and risk-taking mission. We want to be people who offer radical hospitality to others. We want to ensure that newcomers and visitors to our worship services are given a warm welcome to our community. We want to ensure that all interaction between our church and the wider community is thoughtful, meaningful and inclusive. We want to ensure that stewardship, catering and COVID compliance are opportunities for community building. And we want to ensure there are adequate ways for newcomers to connect beyond Sunday services. We want to be people who live lives filled with passionate worship. We want worship that is inclusive and invites participation. We want worship that is challenging, thoughtful and theologically informed. We want worship that is led by a team of lay and ordained people preparation and presentation. We want worship that enriches our discipleship and engages the community. We want worship that is multi-sensory, multimedia and engages with the art. We want worship that engages a variety of different traditions and spiritual practices. We want to be a community of faith forming discipleship. We want to resource young and old to grow in their faith. We want to encourage a broad theological engagement with the congregation, creating safe places for faith sharing. We want to encourage people to join life groups. We want to encourage and equip people to use their spiritual gifts for the edification of the church. For example, leadership, servanthood and worship, etc. We want to encourage participation in the wider Uniting Church. And we want to encourage intentional mentoring partnerships with and between those seeking to grow in their faith. We want to show our love for others through care and compassion. We want to be a community that prays for one another and pastorally cares for one another and supports and trains people in these ministries. We want to be a community that follows up newcomers in a timely manner. We want to be a community that has a commitment to weekly prayer ministry. We want to be a community that has a commitment to prayer ministry integrated into our worship services. And we want to be a community that has a commitment to pastoral care and visiting. At Alba Street, we want to be a community that engages in risk-taking mission. We want to engage the central business district through the city hub encourage participation and engagement with the cooperative, create opportunities for experience Wesley Mission Queensland services through action and reflection, encourage, participate and engagement with Wesley Mission Queensland Reconciliation Action Plan, 
encourage, recognise, name and celebrate the stories of risk-taking mission that congregational members engage with throughout the year. Each week during this video series, we will examine what these behaviours mean for us and what they look like and invite you to consider what they might mean for you and how you might like to contribute to the life of our community through these behaviours. But before we look at the behaviours of our congregation, we are also going to begin by looking at how we got here. We're going to look at a brief history of who we are, our ongoing relationship with Wesley Mission Queensland and our belonging to the Uniting Church in Australia. The present Albert Street Church building was opened in 1889, but the history of its people dates back to when the first Methodist congregation began to meet in the place we now call Brisbane in 1847. This fledgling church community was regarded as the mother of Queensland Methodism, and this building has been the scene of many historic events. Among these were state and national conferences of the Methodist Church and the ordination of its ministers. Queensland's first Methodist minister was the Reverend William Moore. In 1847, before any hymns were sung or sermons delivered, his first official duty in Brisbane was to conduct a funeral service for a prostitute who had died penniless and had no one to mourn her. This act of mercy and grace towards the marginalised became a defining characteristic of the Christian community that would later come to call Albert Street Church their home. At this current location in Albert Street, in 1907, the Central Methodist Mission was approved by the Methodist Conference, as this worshipping congregation sought to meet the growing needs of the Brisbane CBD. Community services such as the Sisters of the People were developed to help the poor and the hungry and the marginalised. Meals were provided for local newspaper boys, many of whom were homeless, and a savings plan was put in place with local banks to provide a means for them to escape the cycle of poverty. During the Great Depression, the mission provided meals and support for the unemployed and the homeless, and the reach of the mission began to move into the suburbs. In 1836, Queensland's first residential aged care facility was established by the mission at our site in Termside. At the time, it was considered a bold experiment, but the mission has always been willing to try new things and develop new ideas in order to help those in most need. In 1977, Albert Street joined with other Methodist churches, the Congregational Union in Australia and the Presbyterian, Presbyterian churches to form the Uniting Church in Australia. The work of the mission continued to mature and grow and serve the wider community by sharing the good news of God's love for the world and is now called Wesley Mission Queensland. The diversity of services provided by Wesley Mission Queensland today range from retirement living, residential aged care, and supported accommodation for people with disabilities to community care services, such as youth services, health services, and allied professional health services. In, ally in home care, dementia care, Auslan interpreters, hospice, and end of life care. Hummingbird House is Queensland's only service for family with children who have life limiting conditions. In Brisbane City, our local neighbourhood, Wesley Mission Queensland has an emergency relief service and a community, community meal service for people doing it tough. Art from the Margins is helping marginalised people develop their artistic gifts and skills and is providing assistance and resources to exhibit their work. Wesley Mission Queensland now has more than 70 different services, locations over South East Queensland and over 3,000 employees. Each year, more than 120,000 families find support and care through the services we provide. My name is Susan. I live in Casino, New South Wales. When the pandemic closed all our churches, I looked online for a online service with which I could worship. And I discovered Albert Street Uniting Church. I was impressed by the message given each week 
and noticed how the technology improved as they as the presentations were made to such an extent that it's a pleasure to watch and be part of. Last week, there was a slide that said, welcome home. And I felt after meeting some of the members from Albert Street, that I was part of the family being welcomed home. I feel so welcomed. And I also am impressed by the work of Wesley Mission Queensland, which I have an aspiration to be a part of somehow. In my stage of my life, this is what I really need to feel belong, feel that I belong and that I am welcomed by friendly people of a church. So much so that I am planning to move to Brisbane to be part of Albert Street Uniting Church Worship and Service. Even as Wesley Mission Queensland has grown, Albert Street Uniting Church remains at its spiritual heart. Every Sunday morning, we meet for worship and fellowship and to renew our commitment to the work of the gospel. We are also proud members of the Uniting Church in Australia. The Uniting Church is an egalitarian movement that welcomes all people regardless of gender or sexuality, race or culture, education or employment, disability or experience. All members participate in discernment and decision-making and young and old, lay and ordained, we all join together in the worshipping life of the community. The United Church believes that Jesus is the Word of God and that through the reading of scripture and the preaching of the Word, through committing ourselves to prayer and to faithful obedience as disciples of Christ, that the word of God, the word of truth and justice and reconciliation and peace becomes present to us. The United Church believes that the local congregation is the heartbeat of God's church. And as such, each congregation and worshiping community is responsible for its own spiritual life and witness. Our congregation here at Albert Street has a church council that is elected by the Albert Street members that give oversight to the work of the congregation and also gives oversight to Wesley Mission Queensland. We also elect elders who work alongside the ministry team to give spiritual leadership to our community. As well as meeting together for worship each Sunday, we also have life groups and praxis teams and an online community where we are shaped and formed as disciples of Christ. Our continual prayer is that we are becoming more like Jesus as the Holy Spirit is at work in our lives. This short video presents some of the important work the Uniting Church in Australia does across our country and internationally in its commitment to work for justice and peace and to tell the good news of God's love for the world. We're the third largest Christian church in Australia. We have 2,000 local churches, 100,000 people would meet for worship every week. From Canberra to Kunnamulla, Darwin to Dapto, you could go from Bunbury to Broken Hill. Uniting churches offer care, friendship, and spiritual enrichment to everyone from young to old. The Uniting Church uh, came into being in 1977 uh, and it was the result of the decision of three churches to come together and form one church. That was the Presbyterian, Methodist and Congregational Churches here in Australia. It needed to be a listening church that's always listening for the movement of the Spirit and watching what's going on in the community uh, so that it could be a church responding in mission uh, to what God's doing. So the Uniting Church has a large presence in community services across the country and we touch the lives and provide services and supports to one in eight Australians in any year. 
Um, the services that we deliver uh, range from early years to, to the very old. So we deliver services uh, to children, young people, families, Australians living with a disability. Uh, in every location we've got services in every state and territory from inner city urban to the remotest of remote locations. Um, so it's pretty exciting to be part of that as a church. We have 50 schools nationally with approximately 50,000 students. I think our teachers and our chaplains are really committed to going on that journey with young people and really investing in them and asking them, you know, what are the questions that they have and how do we journey along with that and how do we tie in their um, emotional and spiritual and academic needs into creating a bigger picture around um, how they participate in society and what that's about. We had a very clear view and we still have a very clear view about ourselves that we will be in the country of Australia, that we will be committed to partnerships with other churches. Uh, ecumenism is very important to us. We said it uh, right from the beginning and that's because we were basically an ecumenical endeavour to become Uniting Church. Uniting World works with our overseas church partners in ways that engage them with our church here in Australia and help them as they serve their own people overseas. We try and build relationships and help people in the Uniting Church to work alongside the ministry of our partners to support them in solidarity and in return have vibrant life-changing relationships. One of the units is called the Relief and Development Unit. It uh, works with our overseas partners in community development. So that's areas like education, health and economic empowerment for people in poor communities. The Heart of Frontier Services is indeed the heart of mission. We are in many ways, in many senses, the hands and feet of Christ in the field. And our patrol ministers, they do births, deaths and marriages, but they also provide practical assistance, a hand to hold, a shoulder to cry on, an ear to listen to for people who otherwise don't have access to that sort of support. People in remote and isolated communities throughout the country. The United Church is committed to social justice because we believe that God calls us to work together for a better world. And we believe that because uh, we have faith in a God who loves everyone without distinction, without discrimination, and that God's will for the world is for reconciliation and peace. So the Uniting Church is committed to First Peoples because of the history of this land. And we would not be an authentic church acting with any integrity as the followers of Jesus unless we had a relationship with First Peoples. What it really means for me is that there's a commitment to working with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, uh, a commitment to wanting to walk alongside us in our issues of justice and poverty, and a commitment to building the kingdom of God here on earth, here in Australia. We look at ways in which we can share our culture, um, share the space, share the land in which we live. And t uh, that seems to me uh, the very essence, really, of the Gospel. As a second generation Tongan Australian who was born here in Australia, but had parents who migrated to Australia, uh, to know that I'm part of a church that gives us a voice, that gives us a space, and it's not about giving the cultural space, um, it's more than that. So the fact that the Uniting Church declared itself back in 1985 that we are a multicultural church. It's very important for me because I know that I belong. I'll never forget actually the first time I came to church here and it felt strange at first because it, it, you know you have all these preconceived ideas of what church will be like and Unfortunately, they're usually not particularly positive. And 
this church just blew them all away for me. I, I never expected that my life would turn down this path, really. It's, it was a surprise. Your life is just filled with so much more value and, yeah, I'll never look back. We now have a short presentation that outlines some of the important elements of the United Church in Australia and how they relate to Albert Street and Wesley Mission Queensland. How did the United Church in Australia come into existence? The United Church in Australia was formed on the 22nd of June 1977. The Methodist Church of Australasia, the Presbyterian Church of Australia and the Congregational Union of Australia came together to form the United Church. The basis of union is the founding document of the United Church in Australia, outlining its core theological beliefs and how it will order its life together. It's also important to understand how we are governed. So as you can see in this diagram, the United Church has a non-hierarchical governance structure made up of interconciliar councils. The congregation, which are the people who gather together for worship and fellowship and to serve their community. The presbytery, which is a regional council of congregations that gives oversight to the mission of the church and support for its leaders. The synod, which is the state body that resources the work of presbyteries and congregations. And finally, the national assembly, which gives oversight and leadership to our work across the country and overseas. The United Church in Australia is non-hierarchical and is interconciliar. This means that we do not take a top-down approach in our governance structure. Instead, we have councils that are interrelated with different responsibilities that work together for the sake of the whole church. We belong to the Queensland Synod. Queensland Synod is made up of seven presbyteries or regional councils that cover the entire state. The Synod in session meets every 18 months for discernment and decision making in relation to the worship, witness and service of the nine church in Queensland. Great care is taken to ensure a diversity of voices are heard at these meetings. Each meeting is made up of lay or ordained members and uses a consensus model for decision making. And we belong to the Morton Rivers Presbytery. Our presbytery is one of three different presbyteries that cover South East Queensland. Morton Rivers Presbytery goes from Belimba to Caboolture and includes 39 congregations and faith communities. Morton Rivers Presbytery meets once a term to make decisions around its life of worship, witness and service. These meetings are made up of lay and ordained members of the congregations, faith communities and church services within its boundaries. The current Albert Street Church first opened its doors in 1889, but its roots go back further to 1847. It is often regarded as the mother of Methodism in Queensland. In 1977, along with other Methodist, Presbyterian and Congregationalist churches, Albert Street became a part of the Uniting Church in Australia. There is a long history dating back to its first minister, Reverend William Moore, of ministering to the poor and the marginalised, and over the years this ministry has grown as it serves its community. Today, Albert Street United Church continues to be the spiritual home of Wesley Mission Queensland. The diversity of services provided by Wesley Mission Queensland today range from retirement living, residential aged care, supported accommodation for people with disabilities and community care services. Wesley Mission Queensland has over 70 different locations and services and provides care and support for more than 120,000 families each year. Wesley Mission Queensland has an executive leadership that reports to a skills-based board that then reports to Wesley Mission Queensland Council. This council is elected by members of Albert Street United Church. The diagram that you see is a structure that we have in place in 2022. Some of these reporting lines and responsibilities may change from time to time, but at the end of the day, the important work of the mission reports back to Albert Street Congregation because this is where it all began. Albert Street United Church encourages its worshipping members to join life groups. 
Life groups meet in people's homes or in community meeting spaces or online to study scripture together, to engage in courses just like this one, to pray for one another and to grow as disciples of Christ. Many life groups gather around a meal. In life groups, people share their lives with one another and share their burden and commitment and joys and sorrows of discipleship together. Hi, my name is Magley Madsen. I've been coming to Albert Street Church since February 1977 and transferred my membership to there a few years later. In 2020, it was suggested to the church that we form life groups. I had led a Bible study group for over 20 years. So when the idea of the life groups was first put forward, I was excited to join in. Our group meets every th Thursday evening at 6 p.m. We gather together at one of our homes, first sharing in, a, in fellowship over a meal, then gathering in a group to share the latest of our studies. Our study usually lasts for about an hour, although there is a temptation to continue our discussion. My favourite part of our time together is the discussions. I don't think there is a session when I don't learn something new. And I love to hear the different ideas on the topic we addressed. I would definitely recommend everyone to be a part of a life group. It is a wonderful way of approaching life today through the eyes of the Bible. I like to think of it as travelling in a companion group on the same journey. Life groups are a very safe space for everyone. For those who have been following Jesus for many years and those who are simply curious to know more. Albert Street also encourages people to join Praxis teams. The term Praxis is used in community development, pastoral care and practical theology as the means by which ministry and service provision is developed and enhanced through a cyclical process of continual theory, practice and reflection. Praxis relocates learning from the classroom to the hospital room, from the school to the streets, from the seminary to the church and from the church to the community. Praxis teams provide an opportunity for the Albert Street congregation to grow in its understanding of discipleship and ministry as it more readily participates in the mission of God through the work of Wesley Mission Queensland. Praxis teams are groups of people who are formed and shaped through serving others and then theologically reflecting together to grow and mature in their faith. I have been going fairly regularly to the Wesley Mission Queensland community meal in the valley for about six or seven years. I started off in the old um, Tongan church and then we moved across to the present building in St Paul's Terrace. I normally talk with the homeless people and help them with their problems. These problems often involve families, money, health and things associated with that. I always like talking and working with the people there as well as with all the other members who come along for the wonderful meal prepared by the Wesley Mission Cooks. I try to be as hospitable and friendly as I can with them all and I enjoy going and helping Wesley Mission Queensland. In the New Testament, the emerging Christian community that we now call the church is referred to as the body of Christ a number of times. The image here is that the church is alive and active and intrinsically connected to the resurrected Christ. In Colossians, Jesus is referred to as the head of the body, which is the church, and we are all members of it. So the behaviours of the church are called to demonstrate the behaviours of Christ. We are called to behave in ways that show Jesus to the world and to one another. Throughout this life group series, we invite you to consider how the different behaviours we will be talking about demonstrate the presence of Christ and enact the coming kingdom of God. With that in mind, your life group leader has some questions for you. These questions are an invitation to conversation. Conversation and fellowship, listening and being present to one another, these 
are essential values and building blocks for any community. And so, as you open your Bibles together, we hope this time you share is enriching and rewarding for you all.